Okay, hi everyone. I am Kevin from Bitcoin for Beginners, and today I'm here with a very special guest, Brian, who's the managing director of Republic Crypto. And their project is pretty cool, and I know Brian through a mutual friend in the crypto world. So I wanted to kind of explore this project and what they're working on with you guys, our community. And so welcome, Brian. Hey, Kevin. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, definitely. So just real quick for everyone watching this, can you give a quick elevator pitch about Republic and particularly the crypto part of it? Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you kind of made the differentiator between Republic and Republic Crypto because uh, we've been around for about two and a half years um, doing what's called equity crowdfunding. So Republic at its core is a platform to host um, crowdfunding campaigns for early stage projects. And basically we are um, SEC registered and FINRA licensed as a funding portal, which allows us to host these sales um, these fundraising campaigns that are open to both non-accredited investors and also accredited investors. And the, you know, the main focus here is being able to uh, sell and raise capital from the retail investor community. And, uh, you know, we've been doing this for standard equity campaigns for about two and a half years. And then about a year ago, we started, um, you know, branching out and uh, supporting token sales on our platform. So essentially Republic Crypto, is a, a platform, you know, same as our standard, uh, same regulatory uh, infrastructure as our equities platform, but we allow companies to uh, host token sales okay. and provide access to both non-accredited and accredited investors. Awesome. Thank you. So in other words, anybody can participate legally in a token sale or an ICO through our platform. Right. Definitely. And that's, that's a huge thing because I feel like one of the big reasons why ICOs have kind of quieted down recently is because of all these regulations and unclarity so that people like uh, you and I were like, we'll just not go to the hassle and just not touch ICOs because of all the, the legal like hurdles you have to jump through. So yeah, sounds like what you guys are doing is solving that exact problem. Yeah, totally. And that's kind of one of the reasons why I decided to join Republic in the first place, you know, as someone that's been in the crypto space, um, kind of early 2016 ish, uh, you know, being able to participate in ICOs and tokens was, was something that I always wanted to do. Right. But, um, you know, if you were, if, you know, if you ever try to participate in an ICO in the past year, they usually say something along the lines of like, US investor is not allowed, right, unless exactly. you're accredited. Um, but to be accredited, there's like, you know, you have to make a certain amount of money or have a certain net worth that basically puts you in the top one to 2% of America. Yeah, exactly. And uh, basically that cuts out the whole, the you know, everybody, like 98% of America and also the world isn't able to invest in these like ICOs and token sales. Um, therefore, a lot of projects are just like kind of just banning Americans or just not doing sales in the US, which yeah. is kind of problematic because I think, you know, a lot of there's a lot of good stuff happening in the U.S. and a lot of projects should be thinking about American investors and also selling tokens to, you know, Americans, which are typically their use, main user base. Exactly. So Republic kind of aims to solve that problem by democratizing investing, especially blockchain investing, so that uh, projects can now, you know, basically allow access to everybody. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, so when we take a look at projects in the crypto space, and I guess just projects in any space, startups in general, one of the biggest things is to evaluate the team behind it because with a good team, it's a lot higher chance that a project has success or a platform or whatever. Um, so I was wondering if you could share with you, uh, share with us a little bit more about you and your team's backgrounds and how you guys kind of met each other, came together and decided to make this. Yeah, totally. Um, so a little bit about myself. Um, I have been, uh, trained as an engineer classically, did, did some electrical engineering work and also some bioengineering work early on in my career. Um, and then after that, I made the move. So I'm born and raised in Los Angeles. So I see a UCLA hat. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> represent, I went to UCLA as well. Nice. So engineering there. And uh, I moved to San Francisco to work at a startup. Uh, then, you know, I got experience on how kind of small companies worked. A lot of crypto companies are also startups. So I was able to kind of like use that experience to, you know, help uh, guide and advise early stage projects and know how they operate on a fundamental level. Right. And then after that, uh, I took a consulting job where I learned how larger companies worked. So I consulted for a lot of Fortune 500, big pharma companies, 
And then during my time as a consultant, um, I did what many people did. I filled down the crypto rabbit hole. Okay. And from there, um, you know, I started tr trading cryptocurrency, investing in crypto, just doing a lot of research. And uh, actually, that's where I found um, a lot of my friends that I also um, invest with. Uh, we have fun we have created a fund called um, Torion Capital, and uh, through that, I was exposed to many other players in the space, um, including one of my friends, Lindsay at Luna Capital, and then she introduced me to Ken, who is a CEO at Republic. Oh, and, okay. Uh, and Ken uh, is he used to be general counsel at AngelList, and also was a former securities lawyer. So he's got a lot of background in the securities law space, uh, which basically puts him in a really prime position to um, kind of put Republic at, as a compliant solution for securities tokens, right? Um, or at least securities law compliant token sales. Um, and, you know, from there, we started to grow the team. Uh, a cool thing about the team at Republic is that we do have six lawyers in-house. Uh, which basically allows us to navigate the current, you know, regulatory landscape for crypto, which, you know, is com super complex, very yeah, muddy, definitely. lots of like ambiguity happening. So it really helps having these lawyers on the team um, who are both fluent in legal speak, but also crypto and being able to combine the two, I, I feel like puts Republic in a very unique position to trailblaze like this legal maze that's currently the crypto space. Um, and for example, you know, we've been able to kind of pioneer new legal documents, uh, one of which is called the token DPA, which okay. is our in-house uh, version of the SAFT. Oh, so okay. you know, if you are familiar with token sales, um, if you're investing in a token sale, you know that the agreement that is being exchanged between the company and the investor is uh, typically a SAFT, Simple Agreement for Future Tokens, which is based off of the SAFE, which is a Simple Agreement for Future Equity, which was made by Y Combinator back in the day. Um, and, you know, I think the SEC has kind of said some things in the past year, uh, insinuating that the, the SAFT is not as robust as they'd like it to be. And they've actually, in fact, subpoenaed some uh, ICOs and token sales that have used the SAFT. So our response to that was to kind of create um, our own uh, more robust version that kind more, more robust version of the SAFT that builds in a little bit more investor protection. And okay. that's called the token DPA. And the DPA stands for debt payable by asset, which means that, you know, the companies can uh, basically repay uh, their investors in tokens so that there's no longer a debt. Um, and that's the legal instrument that we use for campaigns that run on Republic. And, okay. um, you know, aside from that, we're also pioneering a few other um, novel uses to promote like legal distributions of tokens so we can support, uh, you know, SEC compliant or just U.S. compliant airdrops, um, bounty programs in which you're able to distribute tokens to retail investors uh, and in a in a compliant way through our funding portal. So so we're able to kind of like use our in-house legal expertise to really um, think of these cool new ways to uh, adopt crypto in a regulatory friendly manner. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so kind of going back to the team. So you are managing the whole crypto side of things, right? Yes. Like who, um, like who else is working on the crypto side with you? Like what is, what yeah. does your team look like? Yeah, definitely. So um, our team currently has, uh, I want to say about four to five people on it. Um, okay. So so we have uh, Jed, who's a all past lawyer and currently on our crypto team working on basically what I call like our operations, deals and diligence side. Okay. Which means, you know, any project that wants to raise on Republic has to go through a due diligence process. Ah, I see. After they pass the due diligence process, they have to go through a whole onboarding process where we basically help them with um, proper SEC filing, making sure that, you know, their, uh, all their materials are a certain quality. And then we also help them with creating a deal page, which is a website that people can visit to invest in their project. So Jed manages most of all of that which is kind of like what the deal operations side of things. Uh -huh. And then uh, we have Aisha. Um, so both Jed and Aisha are located in New York. Um, I'm located here in San Francisco. 
Um, Aisha also used to be a lawyer and she basically runs our business development and marketing side of things. Um, so, and she's extremely well connected in the crypto space. Uh, she used to work at Consensus um, and she just has this ridiculous network and has been able to um, basically set up partnerships uh, for our crypto team with a lot of like leading firms, leading funds and projects in the US and Asia and around the world. Awesome. And uh, she also helped uh, with uh, setting up, basically she led our first conference called Republicon that was hosted about a month ago in New York. Oh, okay. And uh, it gathered, you know, a lot of the industry leaders uh, across the United States and around the world to kind of have thoughtful discussion and panels about the state of crypto, right. um, you know, investment trends, diligence trends, and just like fireside chats with uh, a lot of high, high, high powered influencers and projects in the space. So, um, you know, aside from Jed and Aisha, we also have uh, Myra, uh, who's here in San Francisco with me, uh, helping out with um, business development, events planning, networking, partnerships. Okay. Um, and she's also extremely well connected. Uh, I'm just like so lucky to have such an amazing team, but they're all just like really well connected, especially Myra is connected in the VC space here in Silicon Valley. And uh, she's, you know, she's pretty famous for hosting these like Japanese whiskey tasting nights with VCs. And uh, we're trying and basically helping to expand our network and connect with um, lots of like venture capital firms, hedge funds to basically let them know that, you know, their projects, their portfolio projects or their deal flow, they can raise money from retail public and they can distribute their tokens compliantly to everyday people, which is something that not a lot of people know yet, but I think they're getting there. Um, and through awesome. these networks of people that we have and through our business development efforts, we're really like slowly but surely getting the word out there. Um, I also, uh, we also have a, Amazingly talented uh, crypto content writer. His name is Ben. Um, he's also uh, he's also done some work at Consensus. He's also done some work at Missari, um, and now he uh, runs our Twitter, runs a lot of like our blog posts that have to do with crypto, and uh, is just super well connected in the space. Knows what's happening on a day to day basis, like on a technical level. He participated in the ETH San Francisco hackathon during SF. Oh blockchain right, right, okay, and things like that. So uh, we just have, you know, just like an amazingly talented team of people uh, that are like just actively in the space, a uh, combination of technical knowledge, uh, legal knowledge, operations knowledge, definitely um, things like that. And then, of course, last but not least, like our CEO, Ken, um, he's just, I don't know how to describe it, but basically, you know, ex-general counsel at AngelList, uh, very high ranking securities attorney. Um, and also really well-known figure in the space, especially on the regulatory side and the compliance Definitely. side, and ridiculous network of, of uh, investors around the world. And um, just like as a comp, as a, just as a team, we're all very, um, I would say we're very solid um, and very blessed to be working with like such an amazing group of people. Definitely. sounds like it. Thanks for sharing that. Um, okay, so next up, I kind of want to understand a little bit more about the process behind Republic, especially from the two different sides, the investor side and the company side. So just yeah. starting with investors, like let's say I um, want to invest in a project with Republic Crypto. Can you walk me behind like how does it work on a high level? What do I receive? And also on your website, I saw something called investor groups. So if you could touch kind of on that as well. Yeah, so as an investor, um, you know, we've made our onboarding process very smooth and streamlined. So let's just say you have never invested before in Republic. Um, all you do is you visit our website, republic.co, and then um, you just kind of scroll, look at projects um, that you want to invest in. You click on one, you click invest, basically it takes it to a signup flow. Uh, mm -hmm. And the signup flow uh, asks you for very basic information name, phone number, um, address, uh, things like that, ba basic KYC AML. And uh, that whole process literally takes less than five minutes. I want to say it takes around two minutes. And from there, uh, you can invest with either your credit card or your bank account. And that's it. You just kind of like type in how much money you want to invest. Uh, and, you know, as a non-accredited investor, you can invest as little as $5 up to however much you would like to. Um, and 
from there, you just kind of say, okay, I want to invest a hundred bucks in this project. And then you hit invest and then you're good to go. Very, very simple, very straightforward. And then from there you get like a, if you're investing in an equity project, you get a crowd safe. If you're investing in a, a token project, a blockchain project, you get a token DPA. And from there, you just kind of now have this investment contract. And once the project, uh, you know, mints tokens and distributes the tokens, then you receive them to the address that you provided and you're okay. good to go. So very straightforward, streamlined uh, onboarding process. Um, and from there, uh, you can once you've created an account you can now invest in other projects uh much much more easily and much quicker and uh, we also notify you whenever new projects come out and things like that um, um yeah go ahead. i forget if you mentioned this like a, a few seconds ago but can they buy with like credit cards or what are the options for like purchasing stuff yeah so currently we have two options for purchasing which is credit card and bank wire Okay. Um, we are currently working on uh, crypto as a method of payment. Uh, ah, it's ready yet. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Um, so on the company side, like, what are your target companies or ideal companies that would join or use your platform? Because one thing I saw was that there's like limits to your raise, and yeah. so maybe that kind of restricts the the ideal type of customer or the ideal company that could benefit from the Republic platform? Yep. Yep. That's a great question. So you're referring to uh, reg CF, which has a limit of $1.07 million that you can raise um, through our platform. And uh, yes, this is, you know, only 1.07 million, but it's a good amount of money for, a, for a few different use cases. Uh, Ideally, companies that want to distribute, you know, their tokens speci specifically for blockchain projects. Okay. This is for projects that want to, you know, promote the broadest distribution possible of their tokens, right? So say you are a, like a blockchain protocol project and you've already raised maybe $10 million from venture capital and um, hedge funds. Uh huh. Now your tokens are basically centralized in maybe like 10 different entities. But right. in order for your network to be like massively adopted and successful, you really want your tokens to be in the hands of more people. Definitely. So, uh, the ideal use case um, for blockchain projects is companies that have already raised, you know, uh, operating capital from VCs and funds and things like that. Ah, are looking to distribute their token to non-accredited investors that want to participate. So that way, you can take in like thousands of investors Makes sense. through our platform, raise a million dollars, which is still a good amount of money, um, but you've already raised a larger chunk on a previous round. Right, um, right. And now with this one million, you're able to still uh, take in capital, but also now you're increasing your user base and your fan base. Too. Right, Something right, like definitely. Right. So, so that, that's kind of the main uh, use case. Go ahead. So people wouldn't really just use Republic to raise, like solely, right? So it's possible. Um, so yeah, you're asking like, you know, can people use Republic to raise seed stage funding um, right. on our platform? It's definitely possible. Uh, and it's something that if a company is developed enough, has the right amount of, you know, investor interest, then of course we'd love to have them on. Um, it's just that typically a lot of these like really early stage projects um, might not have the proper community support or investor interest to raise, you know, enough for it to be meaningful. Right. Which is why projects that have already gained traction um, and already have are already sufficiently capitalized would be a better fit because ah, then they can spend some of their capital to market, you know, this this uh, token distribution that they're doing through through a public and uh, be able to distribute their, their tokens to more people than they already have. That's like the prime candidate for Republic. Awesome. Um, however, you know, if a project is early stage and, you know, the team is great, uh, the technology is amazing, and they have a lot of interest and buzz already, you know, it's really a case-by-case -case basis. We have um, definitely hosted projects that are early stage, but we've also hosted projects that are later stage. Awesome. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so... I, you've touched a little bit on this earlier, but in terms of progress you've made so far, I was wondering if you could share with us maybe some successful token sales that y'all have held so far. And also, what is your upcoming strategy um, 
in terms of just the uh, company-wide strategy due to this bear market? Yeah, totally. So if you go to our uh, website, republic.co slash crypto, okay. you can see um, that we currently have six projects um, on, our, on our website, uh, three of which are already complete. Okay. So you'll see Witnet, Coinvest, and Props. Um, was that your different. first? Was that your first batch? Yeah. So our okay. first batch was uh, well. I guess you wouldn't call them. They weren't batched. Um, they were all one by one. Ah. Okay. So props happen first, and then Coinvest, and then Witnet. Um, actually, I think it was props, Witnet, Coinvest. Um, but all three of those projects have raised the maximum of Reg CF, which is one point zero seven million dollars. Okay. And then currently uh, we have three projects live, uh, which is Quarters, Nori, and Bandwagon. Okay. So um, that's those are all the projects that we've we've uh, worked with um, on our website, and uh, all you know all those projects uh, really great. Uh, they, you know they pass through our due diligence process, which is pretty strenuous, rigorous, and um, we thought that they would be great um, projects to represent you know blockchain technology and be good opportunities for our investors. Um, do you have a lot of companies like knock, knocking on your door, trying to get on the platform, even in this bear market? Yeah, I would say we still get a lot of interest for projects that want to list on our, on our platform, even in this bear market. Uh, we do have very uh, rigorous uh, diligence process to make sure that every project that we list has gone through many levels of um, due diligence Right. and has a strong background, a strong team behind it, you know, building a real project, right. um, using blockchain the right way with proper token economics, token design and things like that. So um, we still get, you know, even though we do, do get a lot of projects that want to raise on our platform, only a few of them, I would say less than five to 10% get through our uh, diligence process. I see, okay. And what about your strategy in terms of getting more like end users, like just retail investors on how, how is that building out in this current, um, current yeah. time? Yeah. Getting, getting users, um, is always a difficult challenge. Um, but that's why, you know, we're, we're pretty active on telegram. We are pretty active on the conference circuit. Um, definitely getting the word out there about our product, our platform and, uh, you know, what we're able to do. I think um, you know for us our, our main uh, strategy to get users is by hosting sales of very strong projects. So you know as if there's a project that everyone wants to invest in, then people will sign up and yeah. invest. Um, that so to that end, we have been um, developing relations with a lot of the, the top projects in the space right now. A lot of which are holding off on a sale due to the bear market, which we were just talking about. Right. And that, that does just prove a little bit difficult. Um, and, you know, as, as you know, and a lot of your listeners probably know, uh, the, you know, a lot of the funds have slowed down investing, especially in Asia, also in the U.S. Um, a lot of projects have also postponed um, fundraising efforts until next year in hopes of the market looking better. So we're definitely in conversations with a lot of these top projects and top funds. But just due to the nature of the market, it's been just slow. Right, right, makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so moving, looking forward now, in terms of your roadmap, what are some exciting stuff um, down the pipeline that you can share with us that we should be on the lookout for? Yeah, definitely. And uh, I'm glad you asked this question because we do have a lot of really cool things um, that we're working on. Um, so all I've been talking to you about so far is our platform and our website which is a you know, SEC registered and federal license funding portal, which allows right. us to, to host these reg CF compliant um, crowdfunding campaigns. Um, things that we have down the pipeline, which I touched on a little bit earlier, is uh, we're working on um, compliant token distribution mechanisms, um, one of which is a, an airdrop product. Right. So for projects that want to airdrop tokens to the hands of retail investors in the US and outside, they can do that through Republic, um, which is going to be the first of its kind because, you know, you know, currently the SEC kind of has a stance where if your token is, is a security, you can't really give them away. You can't airdrop securities um, unless you do it through the proper channels, which is through our funding portal platform. Right. Um, 
So we have that coming down very, very soon. Um, also on top of that, we are able to um, support um, larger fundraises. Uh, we, uh, uh, such as Reg D, Reg A plus, and Reg S sales. So for those unfamiliar, those are just um, other ways that you can fundraise from uh, accredited investors and also Reg A plus, you can fundraise from non-accredited investors, but you can raise larger amounts of capital, which oh, is a okay. lot more appealing for blockchain projects. So for Reg D, you can raise, you know, unlimited amounts of capital from accredited investors only. Okay. Reg A plus, you can raise $50 million from both accredited and non-accredited investors. 15? And 50. 50, okay. Yeah, five zero. And then um, for Reg S, it's more of a fundraise for international investors outside of the United States. So uh, we are able to assist and facilitate all different forms of fundraising, uh, uh, not just you know the Reg CF stuff we were just talking about, and that's all coming down very coming down the pipeline very very soon. Oh, okay, um, awesome. And yeah, and uh, also if any projects need assistance with uh, KYC AML or accreditation, we do have a product that can support that as well. So, you know, we're turning into like kind of a one-stop shop for um, all compliant fundraising needs in the United States and also outside the United States. Um, and just we started with Reg CF to kind of allow the crowd, you know, the general public to invest, but we're expanding to support all types of fundraising. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds like it's really opening up the doors for all sorts of different companies to, to benefit from using your platform. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, uh, I, a lot of projects like the bear market has been making things really slow, but as things pick up and as, you know, people recognize that real projects are being built by really smart people in the blockchain space, uh, I have no doubt that the, that the market is going to come back up again eventually. Right. And exactly. when that happens, we'll be right there to help with, um, you know, getting projects up, up and uh, ready to go. Definitely. Um, one last question from me. It's, can you talk a little bit about the different competitors, either direct or indirect, um, that are trying to compete with what y'all are trying to do in the crypto space, and what makes your Republic, uh, what makes Republic different or better? Yeah, so you know we do have competitors in the space right now, um, other platforms that are hosting uh, crowdfunding sales, Reg CF sales, even Reg D sales. But I think the thing that makes Republic very uniquely positioned is that you know we do have an in-house team of, of six lawyers. We do have crypto native experience on the team, you know, it's working specifically in crowdfunding. So there's no other crowdfunding platform that is like really dedicated to the crypto space right now. There are you know platforms out there uh, such as Indiegogo, WeFunder, um, Start Engine that uh, do support you know, crowdfunding, but none of them have as deep expertise on the legal side and the crypto side as we do. And I think you know, crowdfunding is, almost, is a very crypto native thing, right? Like the ICOs are a type of crowdfunding. So it makes a lot of sense to be combining blockchain and compliant crowdfunding together. And right. that's what we're doing. And there's no other team out there that I know of that's um, as competent and as connected as we are. Awesome. That's good to hear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, thanks for sharing about your project. I think um, when the market picks up and once you have some ICOs that I start looking at again, um, if they're on Republic, I'd love to use it. It sounds like just really amazing, just removing the barriers for US citizens like, like me yeah. and you to actually participate. Um, that's yeah. one of the huge reasons why <laughs> I've stopped just because of didn't want to go through all those hassles and even the yeah. ones that um, did let US people, it's just like they still had a really long and arduous process to make sure that we're compliant. Yeah, I, yeah, and I agree. Like, you know, we aim to kind of be the, the one stop shop for, you know, retail investors, accredited investors, non accredited investors to come and look at vetted projects, especially in the blockchain and cryptocurrency space. And like, you know, if it's, if it's listed on Republic, that means it's gone through a certain level of vetting and due diligence. And um, we try to make it so that everybody is able to invest in these projects and participate in the blockchain ecosystem. Definitely. And, you know, I, I really think that uh, what we're building is in line with some of the ideals of blockchain and crypto, you know, like blockchain is kind of here to start like a financial revolution 
um, democratizing, you know, access of capital and things like that. So Republic is doing that very thing by allowing everyday people to be able to invest the same way that VCs do um, for blockchain based projects and also um, non blockchain projects. Awesome. Thank you. Any final thoughts anywhere you want uh, people watching this to go check out specifically? Yeah, I mean, just check out our website, uh, republic.co. If you want to check out the, our crypto offering specifically, it's republic.co slash crypto. And, you know, there you can see all the projects that we're listing. You can join our mailing list where we'll notify you of new projects that come out. And uh, hopefully, you know, one of the projects that are on our website is interesting to you. And, you know, just sign up and invest. You can invest as little as 5 or $10 or as much as you like and kind of be a part of this you know blockchain cryptocurrency revolution and do it all in a legally compliant way awesome thanks for joining us today brian no problem thanks kevin